lasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in
seem to say, throw cares away. Christmas is here, bring in good cheer. To young and old, make and the bold. Ding dong, ding dong, that is the song. With joyful ring, dog caroling. One seems to hear words of good cheer from everywhere, filling the air. Oh, how they pound, raising the sun. Oh, hill and hill, telling the tale. Gaily they ring while people sing songs of good cheer. Christmas is here. Many, 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 many. Many, 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 many Christmas On, on they send, on without end They joyful tone to every home Dark color bells, sweet silver bells All seem to say, throw cares away Christmas is here, bringing good cheer To young and old, big and the poor Ding dong, ding dong, that is their song With joyful ring, dog caroling One seems to hear words of good cheer From everywhere, filling the air Oh, how they pound, raising the sun Oh, hear the day, telling the tale Gaily they ring while people sing Songs of good cheer, Christmas is here Daddy, Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas Daddy, Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas On, on they send, on without end Their joyful tone to every home on they send, on without end, their joyful tone to every home. Ding dong, ding dong. Bum. Mount Olivet's own Pentatonix. <laughs> Merry Christmas Eve. We are so glad that you are here, that we're together, whether you're in church, you're online. Now that we got that 61 yard field goal out of the way, <laughs> we can fully worship. I could tell there was a, just a little edge at two o'clock and now I understand. Um, but we are here um, to hear this story again, that God doesn't stay away, that God comes into this world. And um, we hear Luke's gospel each and every year, it's always the same. Yet um, the world is shifted a little bit. I have a hunch your life is a little different than it was last year. And somehow uh, the story again comes to each and every one of us in a way that we need to hear that God is still up to something in the world and calling each one of us to be a part of it. And um, sometimes it takes a while and that's okay. And that's why we gather here tonight. And so it's all the smells and bells of worship. We'll have candle lighting and we'll give you instructions on that later. We'll have Holy Communion. We'll hear the gospel. We'll pray and sing. Um, as God comes into this world. And um, it is made better because you are here. And we're so grateful for that. Everything that you will need is in your bulletin. If you don't have a candle already, I promise you there will be time to get one. If you are online, everything that you will need is on the screen as well. And so um, with that tonight, we begin by singing our nativity hymn and lighting all four candles in the Christ candle on the Advent wreath.
life, we gather on this holy night to hear the mystery and marvel of how you come into this world. Come, Lord Jesus. Come into the lives of the poor, bringing hope, into the lives of the powerful, bringing caution, into the lives of the weary, bringing rest, into the lives of the wise, bringing restlessness, and into our lives and longings, wherever our place. Come, Lord Jesus. The light shines, the angels proclaim, the shepherds hear and go, a mother ponders, God's promise is born. God's promise is news of great joy for all people. Amen. Please rise as you are able uh, for our processional hymn. Pray together, God in flesh, your love breaks through heaven on this holy night. Gather together this fragmented world and embrace each heart in hope. May all of creation sing of this comfort and joy. Christ is born. Amen. Gospel today is taken from the book of Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, 
and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him, them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We welcome all the kids to come forward for the children's sermon at this time as we sing Away in the Manger. Pace. Hey, neighbor. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, it's really it's snowing out here. I wow. know. It is freezing cold and snowing quite a bit for 1 AD in Bethlehem. Who would have known? Yeah, right. We get snowstorms here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I came out to just check to see if I need to shovel, but it's so bright out for this late at night. I wonder why it's so bright. Yeah, I think it's that star right there. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen the stars this bright before. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Wait, who's that going over to Mary and Joe's barn? It looks like there's a bunch of shepherds bringing sheep. Yeah, what? yeah, it does. That's kind of strange. Right? Huh. Wow. Is there like a petting zoo or some sort of park? I, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I wouldn't want to clean up after it, but right? yeah. Jeez, yeah. jeez. Yeah. I, did you hear a baby crying? Yeah, yeah, I heard it. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like a baby. Oh, that's right, Mary was pregnant. She that's was right, Mary and Joe had their baby, I bet. Yeah, so oh. maybe it's a baby shower. Oh yeah, look, I see three people carrying yeah. gifts over. Yeah, it's gotta be a baby shower. Yeah. They, uh, they look like they're bringing frankincense and myrrh from here. 
I, yeah, not what I would bring to a baby shower. No, no, I, I just did this with Sunny and rattles and diapers and all that good stuff, but uh, no yeah. frankincense and myrrh at ours. So, makes That's sense. Wild. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 Huh. Okay, now this is getting really weird. I see people with like halos and wearing white robes and wings. Is it like a costume party baby shower? Yeah, that I am so... seems like high maintenance, yeah. Oh, 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 little drummer boy, you're coming from Mary's Barn. Can you tell us what's going on? Oh, I sure was just at that barn. You know, there's a big party going on in there because we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, the Messiah. He was born today. He's this promised Messiah, the chosen one. It's gonna bring salvation to the whole world. Mary and, and Joe's, Joe's baby, baby is, is the Messiah? Messiah? I no know, way. I know, right? It's true, it's true, it's true. Wise men and angels came and shepherds, they all came to pay homage to meet this baby. I even brought my drum, as you can tell. But Mary told me it's a little too loud for a drum in there tonight, but I think you all should go check it out after this. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's Yeah, we fun. should go. Yeah, we could bring diapers instead yeah. of myrrh. <laughs> Probably, probably a good idea. <laughs> awesome. But before we do that, maybe we should say a prayer. Yeah, let's say a prayer. Can y'all pray, pray with, with us? me? Dear Lord, thank you for your birth. Thank you for your love. Amen. 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 We have a quick little gift for y'all before you head back to your families. Thank you so much for coming up. God's grace, peace, and love comes to all of us on this Christmas Eve. Amen. The poet writes, Later that night, I held an atlas in my lap, ran my fingers across the whole world, and whispered, Where does it hurt? It answered, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. I'm thinking about Joseph this year. He might be the character in this birth story we know the least about. We have to piece together Joseph's story by reading Matthew's gospel too, because Luke doesn't write much about him. We only know he was engaged to Mary, and Joseph was from the house of David, the family tree of Israel's greatest king. 
But it doesn't sound like a kingly lineage kept Joseph from hurting. Early on in the engagement, he was told that Mary was pregnant by another. The life as he imagined beginning with her now changed. Joseph had to internally process the shock and disappointment of this news, and it was so secret and scandalous. Luke never tells us that an angel came to reassure him that he too was part of God's plan. In this gospel, Joseph has to hold this all on his own. Mary leaves for three months to visit her cousin Elizabeth to be comforted as the baby grew but we don't hear of the support for Joseph. He probably kept working, keeping focus and occupied while he waited and questioned. And then amid the uncertainty of this marriage, the Roman government ordered all people to register in their birth city, to be counted, to be taxed. And so Joseph and Mary go. And Joseph is held responsible for this journey to take on a story he wasn't even writing. Even in his hometown, his family was not able to welcome him in. So Joseph's unsettledness joins all that Mary is already carrying, the unfinished pieces thrown together, waiting to understand how this could possibly unfold into a life that mattered to God. And then while in Bethlehem, Mary's water broke. In the middle of all that wasn't quite right, God comes in a mysterious entry that no one is ready for. Somehow, though, weaving Joseph and Mary's separate experiences together now, weaving them and writing this birth story that we still tell tonight. The first visitors are not people Mary and Joseph have met before. Wayward shepherds showing up, proclaiming that angels came from heaven to find them in the fields, to sing of the joy that God has come and has been born, calling them then to see for themselves that this promise is for real. These shepherds, who Mary and Joseph probably will never see again, were the witnesses to this birth and God's news of great joy. God calls unlikely people to go, to leave the regular routine, to be a part of God's wide horizon, dawning a day that will forever change the world, adding them to the mix to offer what they have as another piece of this unfolding story. On Wednesday nights here at church, Kids and adults come up for communion, and we invite them to write their prayers on whiteboards. And then at the end of the service, we read what has been written, and we pray for all the names and the needs that have been written down. So much of the writing is from kids. They just know what hurts, who needs tending and love, and so they write about it. Recently, it was the death of a beloved kindergarten teacher's husband, praying for friends who are sick, for people who are hungry and unhoused, for grandparents who have died, for the people in Ukraine. Maybe even more than us adults, kids trust that God will be found and show up in the hurting places. And as they grow, and their faith is nurtured, they will learn that Jesus, God in flesh, was born to people who were still figuring things out in a place so different from what they expected, and that 
they met people who came into their lives to bring comfort as they witnessed to God's love. Kids trust that people will pray the prayers they have written and that God will hear them. And in the mysterious mix of divine and human, bring all the forces available to offer love, to bring hope and healing to all the places that hurt. You see, God is not done creating, even in the messy, messy, messiest of circumstances, so much so that God in flesh enters to experience this bumpy and ever-changing life with us. This is the Christmas story. And in this humble delivery room, did you notice that the first act of love to the newly born Savior, did you notice what it was? God who could concoct an entrance in any way that God would like is received with a swaddle, a tight wrap, an embrace nurtured skin to skin. The first interaction of divine with human is tender, loving care. And that is the sign the shepherds are told to look for, a babe swaddled lying in a manger. That is God's presence made known. And maybe that can be a sign for us too. When we doubt or struggle with our faith, when we're longing for a purpose or a plan or a place, look for the moments of tender, loving care. And when you can't seem to find them, offer it yourself. Be open to the places and people God is calling you to meet. I connected with a colleague of my dad who at the time was the mother to four teenagers and young adults. In addition to being a high school counselor, one who was guiding emerging adults in all the challenges and joys and decisions of life, I just looked at her with awe and I asked, what is your secret? How do you do this? And her response, just love them. As the poet writes, hurt is everywhere, yes, but love isn't far behind, showing up in unlikely places, offered from person to person, kind act by kind act. Jesus is born for every hurting place and comes to remind us that this is where God will be found. And maybe that is why all of Jesus' life was coming close to people on the edges with that TLC, proclaiming that blessing would be found for the weeping, the poor, the peacemakers, the hungry, the persecuted, and the excluded. And amazingly, God empowers us to both care and be cared for, extending this swaddling love each day to wrap this fragile world. If your life is unsettled these days, if you're, the life you're living is not the story you expected, if you are holding something tenderly, if you're wondering where to go next, you are in good company. This is the place where the Savior is born, and on this night, God comes into this weary world, connecting people who have never met along with the earth and the sky together in proclaiming the story of how the divine is so enfolded into this world. Wherever you are, you are a part of this story, and no part is too small. This will be the sign. Lives wrapped in love. The poet writes, The atlas of the world is held in God's lap. 
but God can't stay there. A Savior is born. God comes down into this imperfect world and into your heart. Let it be so. Amen. This time, our offering time, we offer our gifts to support the mission and vision we here, have here at Mount Olivet. We are grateful for your offerings. You can also give via Venmo by scanning the code in your bulletin. And kids, the offerings you place in the basket up front go to feed hungry people in the world. <laughs> Oh, 
is thy so Join me in praying over our offering. God of peace, your birth among us is good news of great joy for all people. Turn our hearts toward each other so that we might love our neighbors and share what we have with all those in need. Amen. The beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams and for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, you come to us in bread and wine with love and forgiveness, with mercy and compassion, connecting us to one another and to you. 
Send your spirit now on us in this meal that we may behold your presence and be held in your love. We pray now as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is always a place for you at this table. You too are part of God's unfolding story. So open your hands and simply receive for Jesus is born today for you. If you are online and having communion at home, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. For those of you here in person, ushers will guide you forward. Uh, if you are in the Welcome Center, ushers will guide you forward as well. And a reminder that all wafers are gluten-free, wine in the cups is red in color, juice is light, and you are welcome to use the kneelers to pray. Come now, for all has been prepared.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We pray together. Humble God, you came into this world as a child in a manger, and you come to us again in ordinary bread and wine. Send us from this table with joy in our hearts ready to live the good news that you are with us in all things. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. After each petition, I will say, God of heavenly peace, and invite you to say, hear our prayer. This day of your birth, O God, dawns with new hope for all living things, for starfish that glow in the deep sea and stars that light up the night sky, 
for snow-capped mountains and snow-draped evergreens, for the red panda and the red-tailed hawk. Inspire us, O God, to renew our relationship with your creation and to care for the earth, God of heavenly peace. Bring peace into this world, O God, and an end to armed conflict and violence. Raise up leaders in every community and nation who will honor human rights for all people. Give us courageous voices to speak out against oppression and to advocate for the powerless in all the spaces where we live and work and play. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people, God of heavenly peace. Bless all who worship on this holy day. Be present at our tables. Breathe reconciliation into our families and watch over those who travel. Sustain community organizations that give to people in need, including Mount Olivet Partners, PRISM, Loaves and Fishes, Home Free, Parenting with Purpose, Meals on Wheels, Mental Health Connect, Habitat for Humanity, Northport Elementary, Second Harvest Heartland, Every Meal, and Beacon Interfaith Housing, God of Heavenly Peace. Hear our prayer. Lead those, God, who are in desperate circumstances to safety and shelter and employment. Grant rest to those who are weary, companionship to those who are lonely, comfort to those who are grieving. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have gone before us. May this cloud of faithful witnesses bless and strengthen us until that day when all are gathered together in the promise of life with you forever. God of heavenly peace. Through the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we entrust all for whom we pray to the tender mercies of God. Amen. Before we light our candles and sing Silent Night, um, on behalf of all of us here at Mount Olivet as a church community, a, a blessed Christmas Eve. I know this night holds so many things, anticipation and joy, and also deep memories and traditions, especially um, if you are missing someone you love. Um, it's just really a tender time. And so uh, this time of worship reminds us that God is in those moments and leading us ahead and um, that tender loving care that we show in the world is actually God's presence being extended. So for all the ways that you will share in that care with your family or extended friends and maybe some rest in the midst of that, um, we wish you that as well. Uh, I do want to talk futuristically for a minute here at Mount Olivet, and that is uh, we have a vision to be open, to know that as a church we cannot just tend to ourselves, that in tending for community we actually care for ourselves here and find our place in our call. And we have embarked on the third phase of our Be Open, and we're calling that Open Doors. And it has a twist to it because we really want to open our doors to what is next for us, just like the shepherds came to witness. Um, where are we called to witness in the world? And where are we called also to receive? And what is the need here in Plymouth and beyond? And in order to do that, uh, we received an incredibly generous matching gift and COVID relief funds and we are just $91,000 away from paying off our $1.1 million mortgage. And in releasing that debt, our posture is free to respond in the community in a new way. And I share this because I know some of you haven't heard this news. No gift is too big, no gift is too small. And so I'm inviting you, I'm sending the spirit to you if you feel called to contribute to this chapter in Mount Olivet's story as we are forward thinking uh, to where God is leading us next. We're so grateful for that. And I really can't wait from a year from now where I'm standing right here and telling you 
uh, the steps that we've taken in order to do that. So um, I share that. If you have any questions, I'd love to be able to talk to you about that as well. And so here's the scoop. Um, you have a candle, and uh, wonderful people are going to come to the edges of the pew. And if you're sitting on the edge, light your candle. And then if you would just take the unlit candle and, and um, lean that into the lit candle and keep passing that light around, our wonderful musicians are going to sing O Holy Night. And after they sing O Holy Night, we will all sing together Silent Night. And on the third verse, we will sing a cappella, and you're invited to lift your candles up high. I personally think it's easier to stand with a lit candle than it is to sit down. So as you are able, I invite you to stand as we begin this candle lighting time and close in silent night. Merry Christmas. Sweet. 
receive this blessing, receive the good news of great joy, God's peace descending upon you, God's hope rising around you, and God's love dwelling within you. Be blessed by God who was born into this world for you, creator and savior and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is born. Thanks be to God.